Your mind is for having ideas, not for holding them. That's a quote from David Allen's Getting Things Done book, which is one of the most popular books on productivity in general. And this book taught me quite a lot when it comes to making your own personal productivity system. And over the years, I tried incorporating some of the things I learned from the book in apps like Wunderlist, Todoist, plenty of notes apps, as well as paper notebooks. But after trying out all of these different tools, I finally set on the one solution that truly works for me. So in today's video, I'd like to tell you a bit more about this tool, which is things free and the way how I get things done using it. So before we jump into my own system, I would like to tell you a little bit more about things and how it's structured. So first of all, the interface of the app is very simple. And in my opinion, it's also one of the most beautiful apps ever I would say. Uh, I tried many different productivity tools and this is definitely the prettiest one out there. So first on the left you can see toolbar with uh, different sections of the app and on the top we have some of the smart list so we have inbox which is quite self-explanatory uh, but there is a few really cool features here. So if you're familiar with Todoist you may know that there is this global shortcut that allows you to put tasks there anywhere in, inside of this operating system and things has a similar feature. So you can access it using control space and you get this pop-up that enables you to add a task to an inbox, but you can also click here and you can change all of the properties. There is also one more shortcut, control option space. And for that, I will go to Safari. So this shortcut allows you to add metadata to the task. So for example, if you are in Safari or you're in Mail, you can easily add links and titles automatically. You don't have to do anything with that. So I'm going to save it and I'm going to close Safari, go back here. And as you may see, I have this task added with all the details already inside. And another really cool feature about the inbox is integration with Reminders app. So Things actually is one of the apps that supports Siri Kit and that allows you to add any task using Siri. So you can say something like add tasks in Things. But then you always have to say in Things, which for me is quite annoying. But fortunately, because of the Reminders integration, you can avoid that. So the only thing you have to do is go to the preferences of things, go to reminders inbox, and here you can select a list that will be displayed in inbox. So let's use my iPhone for that. Remind me to buy milk today. And now my iPhone added the reminder to the reminders list. I can close this window, go back to things. And now you can see that I have this banner saying from reminders. And I can import all the tasks here. And now I have the task added to things. The next smart list in things is today and it also seems quite simple because these are just tasks for today but there is one feature here that I never found in any other to-do app and that's an option to assign a task to be done in an evening. So you can see that I have a list of tasks to be completed today and the first one is to be done during the day and the rest of them is to be done during this evening. So if I want to assign a task to be done during the evening I just have to press comment S which allows me to change the date and I can quickly just assign it to this evening. I can also simply drag and drop the item back to the today list. Next smart list is very straightforward and that's upcoming. And here you can just see items that are upcoming. Next one is anytime. And here you can find all of the tasks that don't have any specific date assigned. So in this case, I can see tasks uh, that are supposed to be done this evening. Another smart list is called someday. And here you can find all the tasks that have been assigned to the someday list and to be honest this is one of my favorite features of things because that allows me to use the principle of someday maybe that's actually one of the core elements of the getting things done method and the next smart list is logbook which displays the items and projects that you already completed and the rest of the items that you can see on the left were created by me and most of them are areas so this is for example an area and IRA is kind of a folder that you may know from apps like Wunderlist. And in some other to-do apps like, for example, Todoist, you cannot simply have folders. You have to use projects that are basically top-level projects that you can still complete. And fortunately, Things has this area feature, and I really like it because I have a personal area, I have a few areas for my side projects, and I also have an area for work. And I must say that I really like the way how Things allows you to organize these projects inside of the areas. And to be honest, this is my favorite way of organizing tasks inside of any app. But of course, we also have standard projects. But what I really like about Things is that both projects and tasks are kind of similar to each other. So for example, now you 
can see a test area where I have both a project and a task. And at the first glance, they look very similar to each other with a few small differences, like the fact that the project has a circle instead of a square uh, with a task. And there is a number four, which indicates that there is four tasks inside of the project. But otherwise you can assign the same data to them. So both of them can have a start date, both of them can have a deadline, both of them can have description as well as tags. And actually tags are the next thing I wanna mention because I find them to be one of the best system in any to-do app on the market. So first of all, we have this tax management system that allows you to create new tags and even group them together like I did here. And I discovered the grouping feature very recently, but what it basically allows you to do is to quickly browse through a huge list of tasks that may have tags assigned. So here you can see that I have a few tags, which is all, that, home, and when. But when has three dots, which means that there is multiple tags nested underneath it. So when I click it, I can browse the tags that were nested underneath it. So I have morning and afternoon, and this way I can only look for tasks with these tags assigned. And there is one more feature of tags that just enables you to use them a little bit faster. So again, if you go to the tags manager that I showed you before, you can see that I have these squares on the side with letters. These letters are keyboard shortcuts, and you can assign them here, and then you can access them on your Mac as well as on your iPad. And unfortunately, there is no option of assigning them on your iPad. You have to set it up on your Mac first. But after the initial setup, using them is very simple. So I just have to press Control, and now I can select the shortcuts that I set. And you can see that the tag was automatically assigned. And I can press it again so that the office tag will disappear. And this feature on its own makes it very easy for me to go through a really long list of tasks. So this is how I use tags inside of things. But I also heavily rely on the someday feature that enables me to collect my ideas inside of things. So for example, inside of the articles area, I keep ideas for articles that I write on Medium. So you can see, for example, that I have a someday project uh, for an article about editing podcasts in Logic Pro X. So if I open it, I can see the remaining tasks as well as the items that were already completed. And I can move back to the project where I also have a template. So this is just a simple task that has a list of subtasks. And what Things allows you to do is to simply convert a task into a project, which I use a lot for that purpose. So I can duplicate it and I can rename it to an idea for an article. And now I can just right click on it and click convert to project. And you can see that all the subtasks that were before in the template are now single tasks so that I can assign a date, due date, and all of that. And now if I go back to the articles list that was also added as a someday project. I also use the someday feature for some other things. So for example, in my personal area, I keep a project called wishlist and I use the project to collect things that I would like to buy at some point. But I also use the description of the project to have these 10 questions that I always ask myself before buying something if I really need it, if it's something that I can replace with something else, etc. And I added the project to the someday list because it's not relevant to me to be in the today, upcoming or anytime view. And when it comes to the rest of my things setup, it's very straightforward and I always try to keep it very concise and simple. And I try to always assign the tags that I mentioned before, as well as the start date and deadlines, because that helps me navigate through the longer list of tasks very easily. And overall, I've been using things for a few years and I cannot imagine going back to using Todoist or any other to-do app. I think I finally reached a sweet spot where I have some sort of a simple tool that still enables me to do a bit more advanced stuff like the tags. If you're also using things, be sure to let me know in the comments down below what's your setup and how you use the app on your own. And if you're not using things, be sure to share your setup below as well. That's it for this video. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.